All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can integrate Passport with Sessions. So the very first step is we obviously need to go into our main.ts file and we need to uh, enable Passport um, by simply importing the Passport. And we also need to, I think later on, we need to also uh, call app.use and then we need to call Passport.initialize. And we also need to do app.use passport that session as well okay so these two things you need to do but we also additionally need to make sure we go into the auth module and inside this passport module we need to enable it with sessions because if we don't it's not going to actually work okay so what we'll do is uh we'll simply just uh call the dot register method and we'll just simply say session so that's true okay that's pretty straightforward now that we have that, let's see what happens if we actually try to log in. Uh, so we should actually not get a cookie back, and that's completely fine. The reason why that's not happening is because of a couple reasons. One, we have not set up the serialize and deserialize user function just yet. Uh, so basically, essentially, the way that this is supposed to work is, well, right now, first, we need to make sure we register the, uh, the initialize and session uh, middleware from Passport, okay? And you do that by just simply calling app.use passport.initialize and then app.use passport.session. And that will take care of that for you. Next, you need to obviously register. Um, you need to actually register uh, the passport uh, module with the sessions. And then once you do that, you also need to make sure that you have the deserialize user and the serialize user methods uh, set up. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and inside the auth module, inside utils, we're going to go ahead and create a new file. And I'll just call this a session. I'll just, I'll just call it serializer or session serializer. And all we're going to do is we're going to create a class called session serializer. And this is going to extend passport serializer. And what we're going to do is we're going to inject the uh, the authentication service. So auth service. And the reason why is because this is what we're going to, uh, we're going to use the authenticate, the authenticate service. Uh, well, actually, maybe not the authenticate service, but uh, let me actually double check this real quick. We basically need to get the user itself. So I think the better way to do this is by... I think it, I think actually it'd be better if we actually injected the the user service instead, and then we get the username itself. Uh, so what we'll do, mm, let me see. So what we'll do is this: we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead, and create a method called find user by ID inside the user service, and then we'll simply just do this style user repository the find one and we'll just pass in the ID okay now instead of injecting the auth service we'll inject the user service instead and I think our auth module already has that already so we can just inject it here okay cool just make sure everything's good oh whoops uh, what's going on here? Inject. Oh yeah, we also need to make sure that we uh, implement the serialize user and the serialize user functions as well. Let's not forget that. Okay, cool. I'm not sure why this is still giving me. Oh, I need to call the super class or the super class the super class constructor. All right, so we should not get any errors. Great. Now, if I go ahead, if I I'm going to go inside the auth module real quick, and I'll just simply add this as a provider. And we should get no error. All right, so inside the session serializer class, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and implement the serialize user and deserialize user methods. So for serialize user, all we'll do is we'll simply just uh, pass in the user. Okay. And then we're going to need to take in the done function. So the done function is actually similar to the function that you've used. If you've ever used password before in Express, it's very similar to that. Uh, so I'll just type out, take this as, I think it's actually error and it's error and then user user. So 
So I'll type annotate it like that. Okay. You can type annotate it as this function if you want, but I'll just leave it like that for now. So we'll go ahead and just call done. And we'll pass in null and user. So really the serialized user method, all it does is it just tells uh, it just tells uh, the, the the library, the, it tells password how to actually serialize the user to the database. So if you pass in user, then that it will actually serialize the entire uh, session that way. Okay. So when you reference the request.user object, uh, that is actually, it's going to give you back everything from there. If you were to actually just save just the ID, then you'll just get the ID itself. Okay. Now with deserialize user, it's uh, it's pretty much just the opposite. We're just we're kind of like just we're, we're going to deserialize it. So we'll get the user, and the uh, the type annotation is very is very similar. So what we'll do in deserialize user, what we need to actually do is we need to actually take in the user or the the the, the data that was serialized to the session. So if you serialize the ID, so let's say for example, if I passed in user.id instead of just user, what happens is uh, this parameter over here is actually going to expect the ID, okay? But since we're passing the user, uh, then we're going to need to search a database for that user, okay? So user db equals await this, whoops, this dot user service, find user by ID, user dot ID, just like that. And we'll make this an async as well. Okay, so uh, if the user was found, we will return no error and then the user itself. However, if there was some kind of error or if the user was not found, we'll just return null and null. Okay? So basically, uh, the serialized user is going to actually search the database for the correct user. And then they will uh, it will basically take that user and it will attach it to the actual rec.user, okay? So remember, serialize user tells you how to serialize the session, and then deserialize user will take that session, the way that it was serialized, and then it will kind of, it will kind of like unpack it, it will take that ID or whatever it is that you saved to the session, and then it'll search for that user and then give you that user object so you know who is actually authenticated. Again, this is how it's done in the Express and SJS way. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So now let's make sure this actually works. So um, for some reason, I don't know why it's not working. Let me actually just write some console logs. Uh, okay, so it seems like it's not working and I think I might know why. I think what we need to actually do is inside um i think what we need to actually do is inside the auth module so instead of registering password module over here we actually need to do that inside the app module so let's do that real quick i think we need to do it at the very 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 root level okay let's try it now uh let's see so it seems like that did not do anything with serializing. So let me just double check something real quick. So we have the serialize session serializer, which is right over here. Okay. Um, we have auth module over here. We have the local strategy. Uh, let's see. Let me just double check everything real quick just to make sure. We have app module.ts. So over here, we have our passport being registered, and we also have the authentication module that's being registered as well. Um, inside main.ts, we already initialized the session, or we initialized passport. So we have passport.initialize, and then we have uh, passport.session. So that should be more than enough. Um, so I'm curious why this is not doing anything right now. It should, it should actually work, but let me see. All right. So, uh, the reason why uh, right now nothing is happening, uh, the reason why is because, uh, we actually 
need to use our own custom guard okay because right now um i don't think this is actually going to pick up with the serialize and the deserialize uh, methods instead what we can do is we can create a custom guard and that custom guard can implement uh, it can it can implement the can activate method and I'll show you guys and I'll explain to you guys what is going to happen but essentially even in the documentation too if you actually look at uh, guards they actually recommend that you extend the auth guard and create your own custom guard instead of you know just having it like this so uh, that's something that you'll often want to do so what I'll do is I'll create a file called local guard.ts and what we're going to do is we're going to create a class called local auth guard and we'll extend the auth guard and we're going to pass in local just like that okay and then what's next is we're going to go ahead and use the can't activate method well we're going to we're going to basically uh, override it okay and then from here, we can actually get more control of what we want to do uh, when it comes to logging in the user. So first, we'll simply just get the result. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. So we'll call the can activate method. And we'll cast this as a boolean. And then we'll get the request. And then we'll get the execution context and we'll call the switch to HTTP. And then we'll get the actual request that was sent. And then from here, what we'll actually do is we'll call the login method. And this will actually take care of uh, invoking passport and logging in uh, for us. Okay. So uh, we actually get more control. Okay. So essentially all we're doing is we're really just uh, overriding these the default feature. Uh, so this will actually, uh, this should actually serialize and deserialize the user for us. So now instead of uh, using the auth card local, we're going to go ahead and simply import that local auth guard and so that guard will be used so it'll invoke passport for us so you'll see uh in just a second that uh it'll log all of these uh all of these uh lines that are inside the uh strategy as well as the validate methods okay so that will tell you that passport is actually being invoked and you're going to see that it's going to uh log the serialized user method uh, or not method, it's going to log the serialized user message that we had put inside the function call. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. So if I call uh, this endpoint, you're going to see that it says inside local strategy dot validate, it logs our username and password. It logs valid user. It says valid user, user validation success. And now look what happens is it logs serialized user. So when we first log in, it's going to call serialized user because remember serialized user is going to be invoked in order to tell us how we want to serialize user to the session. So do you want to save it by their ID? We want to save just your just your username, whatever it is, right? That piece of information can be used later to deserialize the user. Okay, so you're gonna see that right over here. Uh, if I were to pass in an invalid password, it's going to just give me back an unauthorized. And you can see that when I make that request, it calls the serialized user, okay? But the uh, but it fails, like the authentication fails, okay? So using guards, we can actually also protect our routes too, because right now we we can actually access all of our routes. So let's say for example, if I create a new route inside the auth controller, let's call this uh, status, uh, and then what we'll just do is we'll just say get on status and uh you'll notice that if we let me just add the uh, request decorator i should have this uh i should have this rect user property for some reason it's not okay i think by default it's not there oh wait hold on i think i know why it's, i think it's because we have this right over here okay that's fine let me get rid of uh let me get rid of this real quick. There we go. Alright, so let's try logging in now. So logging was successful. So now let's try visiting that route, that status route. 
Uh, so you're going to see that it says 200 okay. So it seems like uh, that's good. Now, if I restart the server, okay, it's going to give me a 200 okay. Now, that shouldn't... Now, it's it's actually giving us uh, the actual correct response. It's just that user is not defined. But what if I want to protect, it, what if I want to protect this route uh, so that way we don't allow users who are unauthenticated to visit this route? Okay, because uh, on, on the front end, Typically, what you can do is you can create an endpoint or you can make a request to an endpoint on the back end. And if that back end returns a 401 or like a 403, then you can tell the user that they're not authenticated. So how do we do how do we handle that on the front end or on the on the server side? So what we can do is we, we can create another guard. OK, and so right now this guard is used to invoke passport. OK, um, so, for example, let's say if I were to um, well, let's say even if I try to use this guard for uh, this round, let's see what happens. You're gonna see that it says 401 unauthorized. Okay. Uh, but typically it's better if we actually use a separate guard for this instead. So what I'll do is let me get scared of that. And what we'll do is we'll create a new guard. We'll call this authenticating guard. And then we'll implement the can activate method. And then what we'll do is we'll simply get the execution context. Okay, and this will just return a promise of any. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna get we're gonna get the request. So we're gonna switch to HTTP. That, Cause that's the protocol. We're going to go ahead and get the request. And the request itself should have a method called is authenticated. Okay. Um so for example, uh let me see if I can do this. So that way I get some IntelliSense. So there should be a method called is authenticated. Okay. And uh, this will literally just tell you if the user is authenticated or not. Okay. So if I do return rec dot is authenticated. Uh, now, oh, 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 one more thing. Let me actually also label these as injectable. Okay. So now if I go back to my app and if I do use guards, authenticated guard, instead of returning 200 every single time, it's going to give us, it should give us a 403, as you can see right here, because we're not authenticated. Okay? So that's how you can use guards to protect your route. So now with all of our other uh, uh, microservices or with all of our other endpoints, we can protect them. So let's say, for example, if I try to go to slash API slash users, you're going to see it says 200 okay, but what if I want to protect that route? So I can go ahead and go over to uh, right over here. And I can go ahead and just simply do at use guards authenticated guard. And if I go ahead and request again, it's gonna give me a 403 forbidden, which is exactly uh, what we want because we don't want to, uh, we don't want the user to access a route where, where they're uh, unauthenticated, okay? So that is pretty much how we can uh, integrate Passport with Session. So now, um, let me let me go ahead and log in. So let me go ahead and log in right now. Okay, now if I access this route, you see it says 200 okay. So now we actually have a cookie. Okay. We actually have a cookie that is that is going to be available for one minute. And now I can make requests with this cookie. And the server says, hey, look, you have this cookie. Okay, you have this cookie. This cookie is uh, valid. It has not expired. Okay. That means that you have access, you're authenticated, and you can access our resources. If they don't have that cookie, that means they're not authenticated, and they'll have to re-authenticate in order to get that cookie. Okay, so now, uh, up until now, what we've done so far was we actually uh, we actually have a full application with authentication sessions. The last thing that we'll need to do is integrate a session store, because right now, if I restart the server, we're going to be immediately logged out, and oftentimes you might not want that. You want to keep the user logged in for let's say a period of time. Because all of our session stores right now, it's basically all stored in memory. Uh, and what we could do is we can set up a session store using something like uh, MySQL or whatever database that we're currently using to save all those sessions. So that way we can uh, uh, we can keep the users logged in. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you guys how that's done in the next episode. So that'll be pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. And if you guys did, uh, definitely leave a like down below. I'll see you guys in my next, next episode. Peace out.